Welcome back to Reaction Friday. Today we're going to talk about a reaction which is one of the most important reactions of carboxylic acids you'll learn in second semester organic chemistry. It's called the Fischer esterification. Now, the Fischer esterification takes a carboxylic acid to an ester using catalytic amount of acid and an alcohol. So here we'll give a general example and then go through some more specific cases later and then finish up with a detailed walkthrough of the mechanism. All right. So let's look at our general template for a Fischer esterification reaction. We're going to start with a carboxylic acid. We're adding an alcohol, so this is ROH. Notice I put a blue oxygen here. We're adding an acid catalyst, and our product here is an ester, so we've changed OH to OR. Uh, we also liberate one molecule of water in this reaction. And if you look at what we formed and what we've broken, the key bond formed here is a carbon to oxygen bond and we've broken a carbon to oxygen bond as well. Now, note that I've used some color coding here. The red oxygen on our carboxylic acid is the oxygen that becomes water, and the blue oxygen, which is from the alcohol that we're adding, is what actually adds on to our ester. So it's important to realize that we're not just breaking off H and, and adding R, we're actually breaking off OH and we're adding OR, okay? Now, this reaction is actually an equilibrium reaction. Uh, now here I'm just showing it going in the forward direction. We're going towards liberation of water. But uh, the way we control this reaction is by using our alcohol as the solvent. And if, according to Le Chatelier's principle, if we swamp our carboxylic acid with alcohol and have a small amount of water, the reaction is going to proceed towards this product. Uh, and there's another reaction which involves the backwards case going from an ester to a carboxylic acid where we'd actually use water as the solvent. Okay, so here, uh, the specific type of acid catalyst we use, uh, many different types can be used. You might just see H+, you might also see H2SO4, which is sulfuric acid. Uh, tosic acid is another popular choice. Um, all of these are, for our purposes, equally effective. Uh, it's just some type of acid catalyst used for this reaction. Okay, let's go through a few more specific examples here. So in this example, I've shown a four carbon carboxylic acid, butanoic acid, reacting with an alcohol, uh, ethyl alcohol. And again, it's assumed here that your alcohol is the solvent. So just in case that's unclear, um, we have a large excess of ethanol here in the presence of a catalytic amount of acid. And it's gonna give us our uh, ethyl ester in this case. Now I didn't show this, but we're also liberating a one molecule of water. But since we probably have a 100 equivalents of, of our alcohol for every equivalent of water, that doesn't actually end up mattering that much. Okay. Second example, uh, again, I tried to make this a fairly, fairly straightforward example. We're starting with a carboxylic acid again. We're adding CH3OH, so methanol, and we're adding our acid catalyst. Now, this time I've decided to show this as H2SO4. Uh, what's the difference between H plus and H2SO4? For our purposes, nothing. Um, but just to give you a taste of some of the different types of acids you might see, um, just to be aware, we're forming a methyl ester in this case. This next example, uh, we have a longer chain carboxylic acid, and notice this part here over here is a little bit different, but again, we're just adding CH3OH, we're adding a strong acid catalyst, toxic acid, uh, TSOH, in the process we're forming a methyl ester. And again, notice that all we've really changed in all these reactions is the OH is going to O whatever our alcohol is. So uh, this part on the left here does not change at all. So this reaction always follows a very specific pattern. Now this last example is one that commonly causes problems for students and, and seeing reactions that form and break rings can give students a little bit of trouble. So here I've shown a reaction where we have a carboxylic acid and uh, you'll notice that we're not actually adding an alcohol in this case. We're not actually adding an alcohol because our carboxylic acid is actually connected through the alkyl chain to an alcohol. And just like when you put on a belt, it's a chain or a sort of strap of leather with a buckle on one end and a hole on the other and you clasp your belt together and you form a loop that's exactly what's going to happen in this Fischer esterification reaction the alcohol the OH is going to reach around to the carboxylic acid and form a loop or our cyclic ester which in this case is called a lactone uh, along with another molecule of water which I didn't show here so again no different in bonds form or bonds broken than our other reactions it's an ester for formation, it's just you're forming a ring here. So be aware, this is a very popular kind of question to have on exams. Let's talk about the mechanism in this reaction. Now, this mechanism goes through a very common pattern, uh, which I've written about called the PAPED pattern. It 
really all we're going to talk about is protonation, addition, proton transfer, elimination, and deprotonation. And you'll see that, that uh, this pattern, that five-step pattern, actually is very common for a lot of reactions of carboxylic acid derivatives. But uh, in this case, we're just going to start with our carboxylic acid. We're going to add our strong acid, which in this case I've decided to make toxic acid, H-O-T-S. And protonation, we form a bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen. And in this case, what we're going to do, and this has one important effect, is we actually make the carbonyl carbon more electrophilic than it was before. Um, it's going to actually increase the amount of positive charge we have on that carbon. It's going to be more reactive than it normally would towards nucleophiles. And, and here we've got a pretty weak nucleophile, which is our solvent in this case, ethanol. And the lone pair from the ethanol can then add to the carbonyl carbon, which is the electrophilic carbon. Remember, there's a partially positive charge on the carbon here. And we're going to form a bond. This is the most important mechanistic step in all of carbonyl chemistry called addition. I sometimes call it 1-2 addition, but just addition is fine. We're going to form a bond between the oxygen and the carbon. We're going to break a bond between the carbon and the oxygen. So we're going to break a carbon-oxygen pi bond, which I've written over here. Okay, that does it for step two. And now we see we've gone from a, um, a carbon-oxygen double bond, and now we've got four substituents on the carbon. It's a tetrahedral carbon. And what we do now is we're going to transfer a proton from the red oxygen to the blue oxygen. Now, uh, there's a lot of different ways to show how this happens, and this is just one. It happens to be the laziest. I am a lazy person. I like to draw the simplest way of drawing this mechanism that's still technically correct. Uh, we're forming an oxygen-hydrogen bond. We're breaking an oxygen-hydrogen bond, and notice that we've got a red oxygen is now um, a neutral species. Now, why is this important? It's important because we're going to actually make our OH into OH2 with a positive charge on it. This is actually going to be a much better leaving group. So this is the second way in which acid is important for this reaction. It makes the carbonyl carbon more reactive, and it allows for the loss of water as our leaving group. Now, the lone pair from the blue oxygen can come down here, and we lose water. This is elimination. Uh, and in the final step, you'll notice well, in this elimination reaction, we're forming a carbon-oxygen pi bond, and we're breaking carbon-oxygen bond as well, and we're losing water, um, as shown in, in arrows G and H. And then our last step, we're simply just removing a proton from the blue oxygen to give us our neutral ester along with uh, toxic acid. And again, although I've just shown it as uh, single arrows, uh, it's important to realize that actually all of these steps are in equilibrium. We're just driving the equilibrium forward because we're using our alcohol as the solvent. And usually you'll have some way of removing water from this reaction as well if you're doing this on a practical level. Okay. Uh, one other thing just about the proton transfer step. Uh, I've shown it the lazy way where it's going from uh, the, we're just showing these two arrows in the same molecule. Uh, probably a more uh, rigorous way to show proton transfer is to show you have your protonated oxygen being deprotonated by, let's say, a molecule of water or alcohol, whatever is present. Um, it's not important that it is alcohol, that it is water. Deprotonated to give your neutral species, which is then reprotonated by a strong acid. And this is another way of uh, delivering the proton from one oxygen to the other, sort of through the third party, if you will. Um, so that's all I have to say about the Fischer esterification, but it is one of the most important reactions of carboxylic acid derivatives. The mechanism is certainly one of the most commonly tested mechanisms in organic chemistry. And um, I'd recommend that you look closely at the PayPed mechanism. I've got a post on that, uh, which not only shares the mechanism of the Fischer, Fischer esterification, but a lot of other types of reactions as well. Thanks for watching. And if you have any other questions or comments, please feel free to leave them at the bottom. Thanks.